Chief Executive John Lee explains to TVB News the measures in his policy address. Deputy Chief Secretary Warner Chook said the city should be more creative in attracting tourists. And Equal Opportunities Commission co-hosts a job fair for ethnic minorities. Hello and welcome to TVB News. Chief Executive John Lee said on a TVB program that the government will continue to support grassroots residents after substandard, subdivided flats are eradicated. Mimo Singai reports. In his policy address, Chief Executive John Lee announced measures to replace subdivided units that failed to meet official requirements, such as a floor area smaller than eight square meters. The CE said poverty supportive measures will not be reduced once all the substandard units are gone because young talents of subdivided flats are also Hong Kong's future. Some opinions from the social and welfare sector said the government should reset the poverty line, while authorities earlier said they would adjust the calculating method to reflect an actual poverty situation in Hong Kong. Lee said he's yet to be aware of a new way to improve the current process. On the property market, the government changed the maximum loan-to-value ratio for all properties to 70 percent. The CE said the relaxation was based on an assessment that the private housing market is developing in a healthy way. He had the authorities have not detected serious or unusual property speculation activities. Mims Nye, TVB News. John Lee says the Hong Kong community is making progress in developing the city. The chief executive also said it is not necessary to hold rallies to prove the government will listen to diverse opinions. Timothy Lee tells us more. Hong Kong's post-COVID road to economic recovery remains sluggish. Former Secretary for Transport and Housing Anthony Chung earlier suggested Hong Kong hold a large-scale debate on the economy to reach consensus. But Chief Executive John Lee said he has already received thousands of opinions on improving the economy through his consultation. He emphasized the need for the government to instead take solid action. Anthony Cheung also called for the encouragement of rallies in the city in a bid to demonstrate to the international community the city's openness to diverse opinions. But the CE said there are many other ways for residents to express their opinions, such as a forum. He emphasized rallies in the past have been hijacked by certain groups of people. The CE also believes progress has been made regarding the community's joint efforts in the development of the city, adding that he will continue to listen to all opinions. Timothy Lee, TVB News. Deputy Chief Secretary for Administration Warner Chuck, who leads the government's new working group on developing tourist hotspots, said authorities will combine governmental and societal resources to develop must-visit tourist landmarks across the 18 districts. Timothy Lee reports. Established under Chief Executive John Lee's latest policy address, the government's working group on developing tourist hotspots will hold its first meeting next month. The group will be led by Deputy Chief Secretary for Administration Warner Chuck. He said he will listen to opinions from across the 18 districts as part of his plan to develop tourist sites. He said Hong Kong should reflect on whether it has launched new ideas and products, such as a gourmet night market or a gourmet city. Chuck also suggested taking advantage of the city's rich cinematic culture and nature sites to attract more tourists. Regarding the policy address's goal of expanding the Middle Eastern tourist market, Chuck said there are no fixed targets. He addressed concerns about the possibility of the city's taxi drivers needing to learn Arabic, saying that it is an overreaction. He added Hong Kong will always be welcoming to such visitors. Meanwhile, when speaking about the delayed cruise tourism development plan, Secretary for Culture, Sports and Tourism Kevin Young noted the delay was caused by a change of the development site's nearby land from commercial to residential use. He said authorities will need to conduct another review for the development plan. Timothy Lee, TVB News. The adaptation period for the city's new regulation on disposable plastic products will end tomorrow. The Environmental Protection Department said it will conduct patrols to make sure shops are no longer selling the products. 
Shops failing to comply with the regulation will be given a written warning and will receive a penalty fee if no changes are made within 10 working days. A job fair was co-organized by the Equal Opportunities Commission for Ethnic Minorities today. Mimo Singai reports. The Racial Diversity and Inclusion Recruitment Fair at the Sikh Temple in Wan Chai was well attended on Sunday afternoon. Co-organized by the Equal Opportunities Commission, or EOC, five government departments and 11 corporate organizations were at the fair to offer jobs to ethnic minorities in different fields and qualifications. A hotel group representative said most job aspirants share a concern, the Chinese language ability. But so happened we are hotel. The guests come over all around the world. So uh, it's like more flexibility for our associate to speak only in English. This university graduate who thinks the fair is useful for job seekers said his job seeking journey has not been smooth. I've sent CVs everywhere. I would say over a hundred of companies. I would say about half of the companies, uh, they just stare at the name and say no to us. And some ask us for experience. I just came out in, 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 in May. How will we get experience if you're not giving us a job, right? Some people came with their families. So I'm here with my family. My wife uh, wants to get back to work, so she's exploring opportunities. This is very encouraging step forward for everyone. Uh, who is keen to work but feels there are less opportunities because of the uh, language constraints. Some hope similar events can be hosted in future to offer more job-seeking opportunities for ethnic minorities. At the opening ceremony, the chairperson of the EOC, Linda Lam, said she hopes the community can scrap preconceptions of ethnic minorities. Deputy Chief Secretary for Administration Chet Wing Heng mentioned some measures for the community in the policy address, including further resources for Chinese learning and parental assistance for non Chinese speaking students. News 9, TVB News. Overseas, Israel said its air force had attacked the Beirut intelligence headquarters of Lebanese group Hezbollah, targeting underground weapons factories. Israel is on a campaign to drive Hezbollah out of southern Lebanon so that displaced Israelis can return to their homes near the border. Nazvi Karim with more. A school turned shelter in Gaza City, where seven people were killed in an Israeli airstrike. This man said he collected many body parts. He said this was a clinic, many children were injured, many body parts were scattered, and many martyrs. Dozens of deaths were reported in northern Gaza amid multiple Israeli airstrikes. Park trucks testified to the lack of aid going into northern Gaza, with the region on the brink of famine. Israel has from last week allowed some humanitarian aid to enter after the U.S. threatened to cut weapons funding. But agencies say the 30 to 50 trucks entering every day is far short of the 350 needed to help 400,000 people. Amjad al Shawa, head of the Palestinian NGO network, said northern Gaza is in urgent need of food, medicine and fuel. He added that things are also getting worse in the rest of the Gaza Strip. In Lebanon, Israel launched at least 10 airstrikes on Beirut's Dahia district, said to be a stronghold of the Hezbollah group. This after Hezbollah sent more than 90 projectiles into Israel. One drone targeted the Caesarea home of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Netanyahu and his family were not at home and the drone was intercepted. But the Israeli leader later said whoever launched the attack made a bitter mistake, blaming the proxies of Iran. With dozens of civilian deaths in Lebanon and Gaza, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, speaking at a G7 meeting in Naples, Italy, has expressed concern. Uh, the, uh, the numbers of casualties have been, civilian casualties have been far too high. Uh, we'd like to see, um, you know, Israel scale back on some of the strikes that it's taking, in it, uh, especially in and around Beirut. Meanwhile, Turkish President Yecep Tayyip Erdogan offered his condolences for slain Hamas leader Yahya Sinwar, who was killed by Israel earlier this week. He also referred to former Hamas chief Ismail Haniyeh, who was killed in July, as a brother and lord of the group's exemplary struggle. Nazvi Karim, TVB News. Still ahead, Indonesia's new president, Prabowo Subianto, is inaugurated in Jakarta. Britain's King Charles visits Australia. And Kazakhstan wants to develop health tourism.
welcome back. Indonesia's new president, Prabowo Subianto, was inaugurated in Jakarta today. He was sworn in with the son of the former leader, Joko Widodo. President Xi Jinping was one of the first to send a congratulatory message to Subianto. David Garrett reports. Indonesia's inauguration day finally initiated a declaration of the eighth president of the world's third largest democracy of some 270 million people. A ceremonial party entered the House of Representatives where Prabowo Subianto has spent nine months nurturing a coalition after winning the presidential election way back on Valentine's Day. The 73-year-old showed his love, bowing to members in a traditional black hat as he entered with outgoing president Joko Widodo. There was admiration for the former soldier as the applause rang out long and loud. <laughs> Subianto took the oath of office, placing his hand on the Quran. In the name of Allah, I swear to fulfill the obligations as fairly as possible, the new leader said. Uphold the constitution and carry out all laws and regulations serving the nation. He has had to wait, twice running and losing to Widodo, who ruled for the previous 10 years. The new leader was sworn in with Widodo's eldest son. 37-year-old Gibran Raka Baming Raka is the new vice president. The former mayor of Surikata was able to become VP after the law was changed, allowing previous regional leaders under the minimum age of 40 to be the second in command. The pair signed formal documents. Subianto was defence chief during Widodo's presidency. Subianto is promising a continuation of Widodo policy, such as limiting raw material exports and a new capital city in Nusantara. Chinese President Xi Jinping, in his congratulatory message, called Indonesia a friendly neighbour and told Subianto the countries can have a shared future in this new era. The inauguration was attended by representatives from many countries, the Sultan of Brunei, Brunei Hassanal Bolkaya, stood. The Prime Ministers of Cambodia and South Korea were also there. Representatives of Australia and Canada met with Subianto before the ceremony. David Garrett, TVB News. Britain's King Charles attended a reception celebrating the bicentenary of the Legislative Council of Australia's New South Wales state. The 75-year-old has been undergoing treatment for cancer. Charles's visits comes amid rising calls for the country to become a republic. Still hundreds lined the streets as he arrived. Britain's King met with Australia's Governor-General and the New South Wales Governor-General. Charles told lawmakers that democratic systems must evolve to remain fit to purpose. He presented Parliament with an hourglass to time speeches. His visit is the first by a reigning monarch in more than a decade. Kazakhstan's tourism market is valued at 1 billion U.S. dollars and is projected to reach 1.3 billion by 2029. In Almaty, the former capital, improvements in urban transport are making it easier for travels to explore the city. The tourism industry is also identifying new opportunities in wellness tourism. Sakura Ip has more. Located in Pamphilov Park, the structure of this beautiful Orthodox church, the Zenkov Cathedral, is made entirely of wood. The wooden architecture survived the devastating 7.8 magnitude earthquake of 1911. Inside, visitors can admire stunning icons and murals crafted by Russian artisans. <laughs> A short walk away is another popular attraction, the Green Bazaar. Here, tourists can find a variety of local products, including dried meats, sausages and nuts. The caviar is priced around 1,000 Hong Kong dollars. Almaty wants to attract more tourists and local travel agencies said recent developments in tourism infrastructure are making it easier for visitors to navigate the city. Kazakhstan will open a lot of new hotels because it's not enough for that value what we have now. Also, we buy in a new transportation, so it's new cars, new buses. We open in uh, new places to visit. To help tourists to explore the city, because our government has created tourist police service five years ago, they will be sent to different tourist attractions and they should be able to answer tourist inquiries in English. 
In addition to city walks, wellness and medical tourism are emerging as key areas of development. Each year, around 5,000 foreign tourists visit Kazakhstan for medical services, including cardiac surgery, perinatal medicine and dentistry. Some hotels are now equipped with facilities designed to boost health and wellness. Let's say top requested treatments in the wellness center are the mineral baths because we have mineral center in the Swiss hotel. A Beijing travel agency is planning to tap into the wellness tourism market in Kazakhstan, especially for senior citizens. Tao Yi Wei, the director of the Beijing travel agency, says Kazakhstan's medical services have rapidly developed in recent years. The country boasts advanced medical equipment from Germany and Switzerland, along with sophisticated examination methods. He added that local prices are more affordable than in Western Europe. Sakarib to Binus Almaty. The Hong Kong Tourism Board opened a Hong Kong-style cafe at the Grand Palais in Paris as part of a three-year partnership with Art Basel. We are bringing the Hong Kong vibrant culture, art scene and everything, you know, to uh, Art Basel. The traditional cafe known as Cha Chan Tang in Cantonese began operations last Wednesday. Menus are written in traditional Chinese characters, English and French. The tourism board's aim is to promote local Hong Kong culture to the international community, allowing visitors to get a taste of the city's delicacies, including pineapple buns and egg tarts, even in Paris. In Hong Kong, some in the performing arts sector have joined a dance training program organized by British artists specializing in inclusivity. The UK artists are in Hong Kong upon the invitation of No Limits 2025, a project under the Hong Kong Arts Festival aiming to spread awareness about inclusivity in the city. Mimo Singai has more. This group of 13 students were busy at a dance studio in San Pogong. They gathered for a shared purpose, to learn about inclusive teaching and performance practices of a 10-day residency training program designed for people in the performing arts sector. <laughs> the teachers came from a UK contemporary dance company. They hope to change the perception of the public telling people that different ways of dancing are possible. When we teach a dance class, everything we share is an invitation and offering. And we often emphasize that dancers and other te teachers and other artists take the things that are useful for them and maybe leave behind the things that they may not use in that particular moment. There's many ways to be inclusive. Being invited by No Limits 2025, a project promoting inclusion in performing arts, Mitchell hopes the students can further develop their knowledge of inclusivity using their roles after the 10-day period. A full cohort of other like-minded teachers that they can learn from through peer support and learning as a community, be able to continuously interrogate inclusivity as a lifelong teaching practice to think about advocacy and think about generating more opportunities for disabled and non-disabled dancers. During the 10 days, classes were separated into morning and afternoon sessions. Kevin works with school or organization projects related to education performances. While he's not a dancer, Kevin said the program has widened his imagination. Teacher teach us about inclusive language. Um, for example, like usually I will ask the participant, let's walk in the space. But actually, um, the word walk is not that inclusive because when some people, some of the participants, they can only sit on a wheelchair or they can't move very easily. Uh, teachers will teach us to use another word, move, because everyone can move, even how little it is. The student hopes the local performing arts sector can provide more opportunities for disabled artists to express themselves. Details of the No Limits 2025 program will be announced next month. MIMS 9, TVB News. That's the news. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening.